Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what are my favorite theorems. Uh, as usually, by a biased point of view, well, my favorite theorems after all, right? So um, today I would like to tell you something about divide and conquer, or well, and a divide and conquer is a very classical idea from computer science or from numerics and mathematics, from mathematics in general, whatever you, whatever you want to call it, we'll see it. Um, and I would like to tell you about a specific version of it, uh, a specific algorithm, which is called the Strassen algorithm. And this algorithm is very, very surprising in my opinion. Even the idea that this could be true is, is kind of striking. So the whole point won't be, um, kind of today for at least for this video, won't be that I'm showing you deep mathematics in any way. No, no, what I'm going to show you is so easy that you can, well, as soon as you know the idea and what to do, you can go and prove it yourself. And I don't mean prove it yourself on 50 pages, but prove it yourself on the back of an envelope. It, it's really, really simple. And I'm still surprised that actually this works. So again, let me say it again. The main idea is um, the Strassen algorithm is, is a very surprising thing. And you will see that it's pretty useful also in practice. Okay, so let's just jump right into it. So uh, most importantly, of course, matrix multiplications. So matrix multiplications are, well, you cannot underestimate the importance of matrix multiplications. Your smartphone is probably running them in the background all the time. Maybe not completely explicitly that you will see it, but well, matrix multiplications, right? Gaussian el eliminations. Actually, the original paper of Strassen's paper was uh, Gaussian elimination is not optimal. So matrix multiplication is kind of, includes Gaussian elimination. So solving of linear system of linear equations. Yeah, that, that, that looked like something we should, we should try to understand. And I always thought I did understand, what, I do understand what's going on. Um, so here's matrix multiplication in a, a nice illustrative way. I, I kind of assume that all of you know what matrix multiplication is. Uh, basically, you take a, whatever, a row, and let's say everything is n by n, so you have n rows I could choose from, I have n columns I could choose from, and each one of those things have uh, has n elements. So in order to compute my matrix multiplication, this one here, it looks like I have n times n times n amount of information, so it looks like uh, I have to do n cubed operations. Um, I have to do a well a bit more. There are some additions or whatever. Let's ignore that. It, it looks like I have to do n cubed multiplications, and I really can't do any better. This really looks like there's no way you can do this any way better than n cubed. Because well, look at it, right? You have one row of information, you have one column of information, and you paste them together. So there's just I don't know how you feel. I, I just think it looks like there's absolutely no hope that they can do better. Yeah, and then comes Strassen and tells you that, yeah, actually you can do better. Oh, it's, it's so beautiful. So let's have a look. So um, let's only focus on multiplication right now. Um, you will see that actually the addition doesn't, doesn't make any difference here, right? So in, 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 um, the main player is really the multiplication. And what Strassen tells us, but actually you only need seven multiplications instead of eight for a two by two matrix. So uh, my two by two matrices here are of course A1, A1, whatever, and B1, B1. So this is my two by two matrix. And I just told you that I naively would expect N cubed multiplications, so two cubed, uh, so eight multiplications, but actually Strassen says for two by two matrices, you only need seven multiplications, which if you take this, if you have this picture in mind, is actually very surprising, right? It really looks like you have a row of information, you have a column of information and you squeeze everything together. So there's just no way that you can do better than N cubed. Well, you can. <laughs> um, uh, so naively you get eight calls and all of you know how it works. I just wrote it down again. Um, so M1, M2, M3, M4, M5, M6, M7, M8, 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 up to M8. And well, you know how it looks like, right? A2, A2 times B2, B2, for example, will turn up here. And that's it. And well, 
matrix multiplication of a two by two matrix. Not too complicated. We understand matrix multiplication by a, of a two by two matrix. Um, and Strassen has this very, very, it's ridiculously simple. And yeah, well, he just says, okay, if I rewrite my terms a little bit, don't, don't look at this too much. Um, the link to the formal descriptions, to, to the formal procedures in the description anyway. So the point is you only have seven. S1, S2, S3, S4, uh, BS, S5, S6, S7, and you paste them together like that. Um, doesn't really matter how it really looks like. And of course, it's just a stupid check by look at this. Well, if you want, for example, you could just pause the video and compare what I've written down here, just expand it, and you will see that it's the same here. So it's, that's a really trivial check. The main as I said again, the main uh, brilliance here lies that you actually can do that. So you split, um, for example, here you have, have those two, and basically um, he, he splits the whole procedure into different bits and pastes them together in a smart way. And then you can get away with seven instead of eight multiplications. So for a two by two matrix, you can save one operation. But that sounds pretty okay, for a two by two matrix, you can save one operation. Um, maybe this means for a 100 by 100 matrix, you can still save one operation. That wouldn't be all that exciting. I mean, it is still a bit surprising that you can get away with seven instead of eight. But well, if you would save one for a whatever 100 by 100 matrix, one operation, nah, I wouldn't be that excited. But the point is you can use the, the standard divide and conquer strategy, which basically is, okay, you have your n by n matrix, so you de decompose it into n over two by n over two matrices. So this is usually the, the divide and conquer strategy that you can see here. Um, so you decompose it into n over two, you could decompose it in n over four by n over four matrices, each one of them further and so on. All right, that's the divide and conquer strategy. It works pretty general. So let's assume you have some way to save a certain number of, inform, uh, of operations, uh, and then you divide the problem further, let's divide and apply the, your, your saving algorithm uh, recursively, that's a conquer, right? So basically what you observe is that all those rules actually do not really need numbers. They also work for block matrices. So you can uh, divide your, um, your matrix, you give them n by n matrix in, in n by, so all of these are in n over two times n over two matrices and run the same algorithm with those rules on those matrices. So you actually need then seven calls for your smaller matrices and you do, well, you conquer, you repeat. So it's not like in each step you save one operation, but it's more like, um, you, you save one operation recursively, right? And that actually leads to the funny approximation of the operations you indeed need to be uh, roughly n to the log uh, two, so the, the, the logarithm two for seven. And seven is of course the number of calls, which is certainly smaller than n, n, n uh, cubed because well, three is of course, the eight operations, the log two, um, eight. So here I have log two, seven. So naively I have log two, eight. And with this one operation that I save, I have log two, seven, because I can use this funny trick to divide and conquer. Yeah, and that's basically what Strassen did. And then he said, oh yeah, well, you can uh, include the addition and multiplication as well. And he got this number. So the Strassen algorithm for n by n matrix uh, comes with the following cost. You need this number of operations, which roughly, if you ignore all the rest, so here's a constant, I ignore the constant. Uh, this is smaller than this one, so I ignore this one anyway. Um, I can use something like, uh, I can approximate this one by this one, this one I can ignore anyway. So I get roughly n to, the, to this uh, log seven uh, log two seven operations and log two seven is roughly 2.8. Classically, uh, again, if you do addition 
uh, you have those n cubed multiplications that I explained, and actually you have this number of additions, uh, but you can again ignore them. So there's a two that I ignore. This is only squared, so I ignore it because the cube is the only thing that matters here. So I get this number compared to this number. So three compared to this one. So Strassen's algorithm is actually in the long run much, much faster. So here is the difference between them. Um, because of the explicit numbers you can use here, it takes a while. So roughly at something like 650 operations, um, if it's n equals 650, it turns around and Strassen actually gets really faster. So please don't do that by hand, right? So um, it, it looks like for a two by two matrix, matrix to safe run operation, but I suppress the addition at this point. So for a two by two matrix, you're better off by doing the, the standard multi uh, multiplication. But roughly around 600, whatever, uh, it actually becomes faster and so Strassen and it actually becomes much, much faster. So this number grows much, much faster than n to this number, n to the omega for omega equals, uh, what was it, log to seven, right? And the whole point is now that, well, Strassen's algorithm has some advantages, some disadvantages, but it really kick-started um, this whole idea that actually you can do better. I find this very surprising, right? Matrix multiplication, it, it really looks like you can't do better. It really, like, you have a row of information, you have a column of information, you squeeze everything together n times, so you said he doesn't, you don't seem to, uh, can do much better than um, n, n cubed. But yeah, he says you can, and that triggered a lot of um, research in that area, and probably your smartphone by now is using some version of of Strassen's algorithm running in the background and you can't even see it. And it triggered a lot of research. So uh, in, in this diagram, which I link in the description, when if you want to zoom in, um, you basically see a graph that looks a little bit like whatever, like this, the staircase graph. And of course you expect the staircase because each step refers to a certain paper, which it basically increases the efficiency of matrix multiplication. Kind of the idea is that matrix multiplication of, is of the size n to the omega. And what you see listed here is the omega, right? With omega equals three right here, the naive one. And roughly here at the last step, which is 2020, uh, or at least the last information I found was 2020, you're roughly at 2.4, which is, I think, very surprising. So uh, n to the 2.4 is way smaller than n to the n, n cubed. So you can actually do much better. And what I what I even find may more surprising, even more surprising, is that um, it's it's not quite clear how good good you can do. So the naive lower bound, just look at it. The naive lower bound is that you have n squared entries here. And you need one operation per entry on in the long run. So the, the naive lower bound is you need n squared operations. And it's still not clear if you can actually find an algorithm which only needs n squared operations. So the big question is, can you drop uh, omega to two? I, I, I'm, I'm not sure. I would be very surprised, but I was already very surprised when I saw Strassen's algorithm. Just to make sure how uh, surprising this actually is, this says that in this picture where you obviously have those three layers of information, one of them is completely redundant. One of them is completely redundant and on average it's, or not on average, in the long run you should expect n squared operations. Which, I mean, if that would be true, that would be just ridiculous. And also probably the practical implications are, are not very huge because probably it just kicks in for matrices that are, um, if true, it just kicks in for matrices that are so huge that they won't appear in practice anyway. I mean, but just the philosophical implications are, are just tremendous. In this standard matrix multiplication that we all know and like, maybe not like, that we all know for a long time, um, I like it, um, that there is some, some a complete layer of redundant information. Again, if this would be true. Um, yeah, so let me wrap up. So 
I think Strassen's idea is very surprising. If you just look at matrix multiplication, it doesn't look like you can compress information in any way, but actually you can. And as I just showed you, we are, by now we are roughly down to n to the 2.4, which is already quite a drastic um, uh, in, increase of speed for running matrix multiplication for, okay, very big matrices, of course, you shouldn't do that by hand for small matrices. But anyway, um, maybe you can even push it to n squared, which I would find extremely surprising and really striking. Like our beloved matrix multiplication has a completely redundant layer. Very, very surprising. If that would be true, that would be mind blowing. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope to see you next time.